uh, kind of uh, pioneered uh, the development of business political action mm -hmm. committees. Uh, and then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, we, I've been involved in, in uh, uh, election law and campaign mm -hmm. finance legislation. Every 10 years we do redistricting in Michigan and I've kind of made that a kind of specialization uh, that, uh, you know, I've acquired that kind of knowledge. And, uh, you know, um, as far as ballot questions are concerned, uh, I've spent most of my summer uh, trying to uh, work out a legal strategy to, uh, to get one of the ballot question proposals off the ballot and uh, the Court of Appeals and later the Michigan Supreme Court ruled uh, that this uh, Reform Michigan Government right. Now proposal, uh, which uh, I think was in reality the most uh, deceptive and mm -hmm. manipulative uh, ballot question proposal that we've had in the state of Michigan, something that was run as a stealth campaign, mm -hmm. uh, was actually removed uh, from, mm -hmm. from the ballot. Congratulations. I know that up north, and if people had taken the time to sit down, I believe one of the last pages talked about our favorite, one of our favorite topics up north, which the is the Mackinac, Mackinac Bridge, Bridge Authority. <coughs> and as you know, this office had fought Governor Granholm and the Department of Transportation when they wanted to take that over. And well, this, this gave another segue to that. This, this proposal would have probably uh, at least 36 different changes we identified. Wow. That they would have made in in, in in Michigan government, right? And they were. I looked at our Senate seat, which is uh, the second largest, which runs from uh, Sault Ste. Marie to Traverse City, over to a little town called Posen. And that I think the way that they went from uh, 38 senators to approximately 28 or 29 is what I remember. 28 senators, and it would have expanded yeah. the size of a state senate district by at least another hundred thousand right. people. So we and would have so, gone to almost um, Newberry um, easily. Yeah. And so those are the types of things that I, I thought were of great concern when we started looking at this because it reduced the representation of rural Michigan. It did fundamental changes to the legislature and the court system and, and then taking over some of the things that function very well in government. And, and I really appreciated the chamber's leadership on this because when I started talking to my Democratic colleagues who, you know, it sounded like a lot of the funding came out of uh, uh, different Democratic interests, they were uh, appalled at sort of some of those actions and, and were as uh, uh, upset as I was. Well, I, I think very few people knew there was just a, a close inner circle of individuals mm -hmm. that were involved in the drafting of that particular proposal. And uh, like I said, uh, it didn't uh, receive any uh, any public scrutiny mm -hmm. because they made a conscious decision not to take that petition to the state board of canvassers to get it approved sure. as to the form of the petition. Uh, had they done that, uh, we would have known uh, that that proposal existed. Right. Uh, another thing they did is they failed to register as a ballot question committee, even though they probably spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on survey research mm -hmm. and focus groups you know, back in calendar year 2007. Okay. So let's go through the process so that our listeners, because there's several different ways that things become on the ballot. I know there's a way you can do it through the legislature. I know there's a way you can do it by signatures. I know there's a way you can do it by signatures, and I think get it through the legislature. So if you can give us a little bit of an overview of that. Well, uh, Michigan is one of the states, one of about 25 states, that has the initiative and referendum. Uh, in, in Michigan, we have the initiative not only for statutory initiative, uh, but also constitutional amendment initiative. Uh, to put a constitutional amendment on the ballot through the petition process requires uh, people to uh, circulate petitions and collect signatures equal to 10% of the total vote cast for governor in the last okay. election. Okay. Uh, that works out right now to somewhere just in excess of 380,000 okay. valid signatures. Now, with the population declining, you know, because of lost jobs or pretty static, it really depends on sort of voter turnout as to what that mandate is. That's and, right. And it potentially could go down if... Every some, four years, yeah. that number will fluctuate. Okay. But it's, it's always based upon 10% of the total vote okay. cast for governor. Now, a lot of people think it's much too easy to amend the Michigan Constitution. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's, uh, that, that's for a debate for right. another day, right. but it's, that, that's the requirement. Mm -hmm. to, uh, to initiate uh, legislation, uh, in, in essence, to kind of bypass the state legislature mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and have the voters vote directly on a, on a, uh, 
uh, on a piece of legislation. Uh, unlike a constitutional amendment, this would just be uh, statutory in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, that would require uh, collecting signatures equal to 8% of okay. the total vote cast for governor. That works out to a little bit uh, more than 304,000 okay. signatures. Very good. Michigan is uh, one of these states that has really kind of an indirect statutory initiative in that after you collect the signatures, then that uh, proposal after the, the number of signatures have been determined, mm -hmm. um, then the legislature has 40 session days to, to enact mm -hmm. that legislation. Um, if the legislature enacts it, the governor has no role to either okay. sign it or veto it. Uh, but if the legislature does not act on it or mm -hmm. rejects it, then it goes on the statewide ballot. Okay. Now, the, the aspect of that is, is then, can those bills be modified or do they have to be presented to as the, the petition signatures uh, were? They, they cannot be amended okay. uh, in, in either the House or the state okay. Senate. Um, and then if the voters are actually called upon to enact this proposal and they, and they, and they approve it, mm -hmm. uh, then the legislature in the future uh, can only amend it or, or, or uh, repeal it with a three-fourths vote okay. of the state legislature, which is an extraordinarily high number to get. I know that there was a right to life issue a couple of years ago where this happened. Is there any, been any other major legislative initiatives where that type of uh, uh, program has been put in place? Uh, as far as statutory initiatives, mm -hmm. uh, um, I would say uh, Detroit Casino Gaming is probably the, uh, uh, you know, probably the, been the biggest piece of statutory legislation passed uh, uh, through the initiative okay. process. Okay. And then the, the voters of the state of Michigan reserve to themselves the power of referendum. Okay. And there they can reject a law passed by the state legislature. Uh, if they go out and collect signatures equal to 5% uh, okay. of the total vote cast for governor. Right now, that would be approximately 190,000 okay. signatures. So if a bill that is passed <coughs> the Michigan Senate, the Michigan House, and is put in as signed by the governor becomes a law, any public act, those can be repealed by uh, people going out and, uh, and it's just a repealer legislation is or a repealer? Well, they once they collect the, the number of signatures uh, that uh, are required, okay. Uh, and sufficiency is determined that they've collected s signatures equal to 5%, then that public act is suspended okay. until the next general election when the voters have a chance to vote yes or no on okay. that particular public act. Uh, the, the last time that happened was the, uh, on, on morning dove hunting okay. in, in Michigan. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's, it's rarely invoked, but uh, that, that remains one okay. of the one of the tools that the voters of the state of Michigan have as far as, uh, you know, um, the initiative or referendum process. So your time focusing on these issues. What, um, uh, the other thing I wanted to briefly bring up is, is that as our, our voters are looking at the ballots, there's, besides voting for the president and the United States Senate and your congressional delegation, and, and this year our st uh, state house, we have, uh, I think, almost 42 or 43 freshman house members that will be coming uh, onto the ballot. Yeah, we have 44 term-limited state, state representatives. Yeah. So, so then we go down to the, the, the next level, and, and there's the State Board of Ed. There will be two candidates voting, running for there. So, uh, Wayne State Board of Governors, I believe, and then the University of Michigan Board of Regents, and then the Michigan State Trustees. That's correct. And so those are all nominated through the party process. And so as our listeners can go, those are all the way down at the bottom of the ballot and are people that we shouldn't be forgetting about. And then I understand there's what, Supreme Court justice that's up? Yeah, we